Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Appreciate you guys coming through. Uh, guys, let's get into the word. I am in Proverbs. We're in chapter 3, verse uh, 5. I've read this before. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. This is a great word. Um, I've read it before. Um, there's different ways that you can apply that in your life. Really important, guys. Make sure that you check the description down below where this, this, where this uh, scripture is going to be in so that you can make the time and read it on your own so that God, so that God can um, reveal to you how you can apply this in your day-to-day -day basis and whatever it is that you're going through uh, at whatever time you're going through. Sometimes reading it more than once helps because it teaches you something new. Uh, it's kind of like watching a movie twice and you see, so part, you see a part that you didn't see before. The word is kind of sort of the same way. Guys, um, and, and, and I'm getting into it again because trust in the, in, in, trust in the Lord with all your heart. We say that. But do we really mean that? Let me tell you, throughout the course of all my situation in the past four weeks, trusting in the Lord was tough because I was leaning on my own understanding. I was trying to um, fix something that I could not fix myself, that I needed to let go and let God or let him do it himself and not me. And then I got to the point where I was seeking other people's advice and trying to get them to talk to me and trying to get God to talk to me through them. And um, so much so that through, towards the beginning of the situation, I tried to reach out to my pastor and my pastor totally uh, ignored me. Or at least that's the way I felt. When you are hurt, guys, your feeling take control of everything that you're going through. And feelings are a chemical which changes in every five seconds. And due to whatever you are going through, your feelings are going to change based on your surrounding, based on your situation. And when you don't rationalize because you are being led by your feelings and your emotion, you don't see what is obvious in front of you. God has been with me throughout this situation and I wasn't unable to see him because I was so focused on how I was feeling, like most of us do when we're hurt. Um, before I went to go see um, my mom and my aunts and that I was hurt and feeling all kinds of ways, um, I prayed to God. And as I got there and, and had conversations with my aunts, uh, my mom sat there and didn't say much. And throughout that situation, I finally opened myself to her and told her that she had the right to voice her opinion. That even though she felt that I'd never gave her the place of the mom that she is to me, uh, that, that I have forgiven her and I have forgotten. And even though this situation tends to bring back that pain and wants me to use that pain that is not there anymore to justify what I'm feeling at, in that situation, um, it still didn't mean that she could not voice her opinion, that I truly forgave that situation. And uh, I was able to give her release and something that she did not know that she had the right to by speaking what I had never spoken to her before, apparently. And throughout this whole situation, guys, I have been able to give other people release by helping them, by letting God use me to help them in whatever situations they have or they were going through. I was able to pray for a young man at work that I was talking to him about some of my personal situation and he confessed to me that he had gone through something like that with his brother. And um, I believe that God used me to give him some words so that he can feel that it wasn't his fault. 
that it had nothing to do with him, his brother's decision, and no longer being with us. And uh, there was another man who I worked with who also confessed to me some frustrations that he's going through and some pain that he's going through because his mom is no longer mentally with us. And I was able to give him relief uh, by letting God use me. And I was able to pray for him also at my job. I was giving back what, was being, what had been given to me throughout this course of my frustration and my pain. And God was able to use me. And I was able to let God use me through this situation because you know what? I never left God through my pain. If anything, I clinged on even harder than ever. Like I said, my mom finally spoke to me. She finally said, gave her opinion and she told me she didn't want to say that God revealed to her that he had me. That he was in control. That he was holding him, holding me in his arms. And she told me that. And that as I let go and let God, I started realizing that God was around me this whole time. By using the people that were around me to let me know that I just needed to trust in him. And not lean in my own understanding. Uh, when I went and saw the pastor and had some conversation with him for and told him about some of my previous issues, some of my upbringing to the present day, how I felt that I just couldn't get it straight. He gave me some great advice, use some great example of his own life to show me that you just got to be patient. You just got to trust in God and things will happen in due time. And um, he told me at the end, when uh, he finished praying, he said, it wasn't that I didn't care. It wasn't that I didn't want to call you. It was that when I saw the message and I read it, God told me not to call you. I asked him, what should I do now? What can I do? And all he said was to pray. And that's all I did. And I have been praying for you since. But he said that he was in control. He said that he got you. So that's why I didn't reach out to you. So again, what my mom told me, the pastor also said. And when my emotions could not take control of my rationalization because I was trying to focus in God, I realized that he truly did have me because I was able to see a lot of the things that he was doing around me through the situation. And um, what I'm trying to say, guys, is that we get caught up in our frustration, in our situation that we don't want to rationalize because our feelings don't let us rationalize. But if you read the word and you not only apply it to yourself, but you also practice what it says and you have faith, God would actually do the things that he needs to do, but you need to let go. Because you no longer are going to be able to fix it. God wants to be the one to fix it. And God was telling other people not to try to fix the situation. Because he wanted to fix it for me by himself. So that no one took the credit for it but him. And I couldn't see that. He wanted to use my situation as a platform. So that he and only him could be glorified for what has been happening and no one else. And I couldn't see that. Yet I had heard a preaching uh, from this uh, pastor called um, Rudy Iglesia that um, also said that when you are going through things, that's when God comes into place. That's when God shows his face because God wants to be the one for you to cling on not no one else and you can't get mad on other people that are not willing to help you and it's not them it's god not letting them just like the pastor uh and i understood that after i realized that i needed to let go let me go into corinthians first corinthians 13 and we're going to go into um uh four and it says 
Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not uh, what is that word? Dishonor. Okay. It does not dishonor others. It it is not self seeking. It is not easily anger. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hope, always preserves. Those are key words. Those are important. And in a relationship, if you put this into practice, guys, it will help. I realized in this last week, once I let go and God took control of my situation, from Monday to the present day, I have been in contact with Jessica over and over again. There were things that needed to be said and we finally sat together and we put our stuff on the table and there were things that she was um, resentful and there were things that I was resentful and there were things that we thought were fixed but they weren't because we were so caught up in trying to tell each other what we were feeling and what we were going through that we weren't really hearing each other so words were basically just not uh, how do you say that we were not actually understanding each other because we were trying to get our point across and I can admit I can really truly admit that I spent a lot of time trying to prove my point I spent a lot of time trying to be right and my pastor told me Friday, it looks to me that you're a perfectionist, and that I am. Sometimes trying to be right is not all it's cracked up to be. Trying to prove a point is not all it's cracked up to be. Because the amount of energy that you spend trying to do that, you're not listening to what that other person is trying to say. And it's very true. Because I was so caught up in trying to prove a point and trying to be right, that that passage I just read, it says love is not, uh, love, is, love is patient. I didn't have any patience because I wasn't listening. Love is kind. I wasn't being kind when I was trying to prove my point. It says it does not envy. I wasn't being envious to her, but I'm pretty sure I sound that way. It does not boost which basically says you don't act like you know it all i was acting that way uh it it is not proud oh man was i proud i was proud because some of my conversations that i thought that we could not have because of being a man and being proud i would get upset so much because i felt that i had to explain myself and it was only because I was proud of what I was going through. I, I, I was so proud that I didn't want to share my frustrations with her. When in a relationship, this is what you're supposed to do. Uh, and you have to put that aside. So here's what I'm saying. That's why this word is important. It does not um, dishonor other. And, and I don't think I dishonored. I think I've been uh, the opposite of that, but I can see that being a, a prime concern. It is not selfless, self-seeking. I was self-seeking because I was so trying to, 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 to get my point across that I wasn't listening, so I was being selfish. It is not easily angered. Like I said, I was angry in a lot of situations, and I wasn't really listening. It keeps no record of wrong. Very important. If you spoke about something and you, the person apologized and you apologize to them, 
Do not bring that back, even if it happened two or three days ago, to justify what you're speaking about now, because one thing has nothing to do with the other, even though it validates your point, like I've done so many times, I brought a, a previous situation to the present situation to justify my reasoning, only so that I can be right. What is the point of being right if right now her feelings and what she's trying to get me to listen to is falling in deaf ears because I'm so caught up in trying to be right that I just lost the whole situation because I wasn't willing to listen. It keeps no records of wrong. Just said about that, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Be truthful in everything that you speak with your other relationship. Talk about things that you're not comfortable talking about. You have to do that. You're gonna have to be honest because then there can be some understanding to why you're acting the way that you're acting. Um, it always protects. You know, if you want to protect your relationship, you might not want to be out there talking about your personal situation with other people. Uh, because that other person might not really understand what is it that you're going through because you're only going to tell them your side. Uh, even if you have the tenacity, like I do, to talk about both sides, but maybe that person really doesn't have the right to listen to your relationship because they're probably going through a lot worse situation than you and they really can't advise you on that. So you might want to protect your relationship in that aspect. Always trust Always trust, always hope, always preserve. So preserving your relationship is always important. And um, what I'm trying to say with this verse that I read, if you apply these, these passages that God has in the Bible, in your own personal relationship, you can't go wrong. And first and foremost, always pray. Uh, first and foremost, take the time to read the word so that God can give you revelations on the things that you're reading. Um, I have been blessed through this situation, even though it was tough. I was able to see uh, God's hand throughout the situation. Uh, I was told that I was kind of like the story of Job, that if you have not read it, take the time to read it. A rich man who had everything. Um... Everything was being taken away from him because the enemy wanted to test him. Because the enemy kept asking God. The only reason he remained faithful is because he has everything and you've been protecting him throughout his whole life. But let me, let me get in there and start taking some of his wealth. And I believe that he will not be as faithful as he claims to be. Well, if I want to apply that story like some people told me that I'm like him, it does make sense. Um, I am wealthy because I had what I've always yearned for. I had a family. Well, let me rephrase that. I still have. I have a family. I have a beautiful woman who loves me, who cares about me, and who loves God first and foremost. I have three kids that are not mine, but because they're a part of her, they automatically become a part of me. Great, loving so I was rich, and uh, when I least expected it, I lost it all. But what I can say, see how the story of Job relates to me is that Job remained faithful to God even though he lost it. So exactly what God knew that Job was going to do when the devil asked him, let me take this, let me take that away, Job did. He remained so I was tested, and even though I was frustrated, hurt, I let go, and I let God, and I remained faithful with Him. I kept looking for Him. I kept reading the Word. I kept listening to preaching all day, every day, as I've done since I gave my life to God. I've kept my ear close to listen to what He had to say to me, even though sometimes I couldn't apply it. But I remained faithful. I looked for him 
every corner that I could throughout my frustration. So, in a sense, yes, I guess I am kind of like Job. I remained, God prevailed, and we were able to sit down and squash everything. We were able to forgive one another. We were able to forget, and we're now able to communicate, and we're now able to put God first, just like we were supposed to do from the very beginning. And now we're able to put our indifferences aside and have a conversation, regardless of how uncomfortable it may be. But be quicker to listen to one another and be slow to speak and stop trying to be right. That's what I learned. That's what I'm applying. And I hope that if this video meant anything to you, if this video has spoken to your heart, share it with someone else that can benefit just like you. I pray that on this day, God blesses you and helps you throughout the day and overall you can become a blessing to someone else. I hope that when you're going through whatever situation you're going through, you can trust in Him. You can believe in Him. You can ask Him to give you wisdom, to give you patience, to give you favor. Things are tough, guys, and they're going to be tough, and you're going to be offended. But if you speak about whatever offense you have, and you forgive each other, whoever, you can move on. Bitterness doesn't actually help. It doesn't help. It just creates more of a problem. It, it uh, fogs your vision in Christ because you're so focused on being hurt and being bitter that you can't receive what God is trying to give you or what God is trying to teach you. So if you can forget about what hurt and forgive, God can really start showing you what he really wants from you and what he wants to teach you of whatever frustration or whatever situation you're going through right now to help you grow spiritually, to help you grow as an individual and to apply in your personal life. And maybe the situation that you're going through is to help mold you into a better person, to take away some of the things that is still in there that you claim that is not in there throughout the process. My pastor spoke about to me that you're kind of sort of like an onion every time God peels a piece that is unnecessary and toss it away and he's going to keep peeling different sections of you that is unnecessary and take it away but throughout that peeling it's going to be painful it's going to be frustrating and you're going to be tested but you have to trust and overall you have to learn to let go and let God. That's what I have for you guys today. I hope you guys have a great day. Love you and thank you for your prayers. Please keep praying for us as I will be keep praying as I will keep praying for you guys as well. Love you guys. See you in the next one. God bless.